possible actions. So number one is Dr. X received, received, do I say that? Or does? I think that's done, right? Okay, so I'm requesting the board approve and authorize investigative complaint against Dr. X. The board, rece board office received correspondence from the state body pharmacy that Dr. X has not obtained a patient utilization report prior to prescribing controlled substance to his or her patients as required by NRS 454 and AB 474. So I'm requesting the board um, authorize an investigation um, into uh, whether Dr. X uh, may have violated those statutes. This is Bassani, so moved. Second choice. Sure. Do we get any, like, do we see a copy of that? No. No. No, no. 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 because per statute, um, it's confidential until the investigation. So if you approve the investigation, it's confidential until the investigation confirms um, that there is a violation of your practice act. And when your counsel makes it public by filing a complaint, an actual complaint. So right now this is just an accusation, right, Deb? This is an allegation that upon investigation may or may not be shown to be accurate um, as a protection for the <coughs> licensees so that, because anything, anything you look at right now, first of all, precludes you from voting down the road if it does to be something that needs to come before the board, number one. Number two, anything that we give to the board right now becomes public. So as a protection for the licensees who are merely being accused of something and nothing has been proven, um, we don't disseminate that information, uh, not only because it's good for the licensees, but because it's per statute is to be, it's supposed to be confidential. So um, this is you merely an investigation. Well, it is. Well, it's it's, Dr. it's, Dr. it's Dr. 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 So are you questioning whether or not we actually received a letter I mean, from the pharmacy? I mean, can, we see, can we see it? You, know. you will see it <laughs> will if see it, it, it becomes public. Yes. You will see the actual letter. Yes. So for example, if they investigate and the accusation turned out that they can't support it, right. there's no evidence of it. There have been multitudes of complaints filed regarding this AB 474 that when we've looked into them, they have been absolutely 1,000% untrue. Um, and therefore, why would we sully I'm that doctor's name? I'm just other stuff I didn't get anything with that part of it. So, so it, it's twofold, actually. When it comes to AB 474, the legislature actually gave um, the executive director of the boards the authority to look into these. So when I receive information from the State Board of Pharmacy, in the statute, there's a whole process that I'm required to do, okay? So when the pharmacy board says, I have what I believe they think is evidence that this person isn't doing what they're supposed to, then I would go forward with a complaint and now that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm asking the board to approve a complaint. Um, and the reason it's confidential is under NRS 631.368, it says, any records or information obtained during the course of the investigation by the board or any record of the investigation are confidential. So, so it would be a violation for me to give you that. So to be clear, all you're approving is for your board staff to investigate the accusation. I was wondering why it would get anything on that part. Because if it's false, as your staff counsel said, it could kind of damage a reputation of, because that's what accusations do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, do you, right. Dr. So Lee, do you believe accusations should be made public? Well, I mean, you didn't have to, like, uh, document the name, obviously, you could have X'd it out, right? It's, but it's the same. It's, it's the same this thing. This is what. Well, the correspondent okay. states. So if you are not comfortable, then, then what I hear you saying is that you're not comfortable that it's accurately being told to you what the correspondent states. So do you believe what staff has changed the information that you're looking at? No, that's not the point. The point is, I mean, if that was the case, if we didn't, if we didn't go up by that, we wouldn't have anything in our book, right? If that was the case, we would have just had this and we could have just voted, right? The point was, we have this book and correlating with the agenda, right? And everything correlates <coughs> together. Not necessarily. No. no. 
this different? Is some, it? some information is confidential. So you are not privy to it yet because if it is told to you right now, mm -hmm. this is public. This is a public so, meeting. So Dr. X. X would be exposed publicly that he overprescribed for his grandmother. Dr. And, and X doesn't even know who Dr. X is. <laughs> <laughs> right. I only know who Dr. X is. I don't even know who Dr. X is. I mean, X I don't want to know what who Dr. X is either. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. No, I didn't say that. Dr. I said, X I said doesn't could, even he, know. She could, uh, she could have marked mark that up, right. I said. Dr. 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 Lee, right. this process has been going on for a while. I know you're new, but this process works by statute. And I think you need to have a little confidence because if this true, if this complaint is true, you are going to see who Dr. X is <coughs> because it's going to be investigated and it's going to come before the board again. And we will highlight that that was Dr. X for you. And to add, it's not just your board that does this. There are other medical boards that do the same thing. They bring the accusation before the board because they need board authority in order to even investigate. And it's brought before the board in the same manner. I'd like to make a motion we approve the investigative um, the investigation of Dr. X. Sorry, Dr. Pisani, I think you already did, right? There was a motion in a second already? Was there? Yes. It's already on there. Yes. 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 We're in discussion. Yes. 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 Right. Sorry. So all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Moving on with the second. Okay, and this is, I'm asking the board authorize an investigative complaint against Dr. Y. The board received notification from the uh, Office of the Attorney General alleging Dr. Y may have billed Medicaid for services not rendered, which would constitute a violation of NRS 631.348 subsection 6. Motion to approve Motion. the recommendation for the investigation. <coughs> Second, Pisani. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Item three. Um, I am requesting the board authorize an investigative complaint against Dr. Z. Um, we've received information from a patient's family member that Dr. Z may have violated NAC 631.2213, NAC point, um, sorry, NAC 631.2213 when he allegedly sedated a patient without a proper permit. Pisani, make a motion to approve the investigation for Dr. Z. Second Sanders. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, moving on to policies, D. Yes, so um, in the past, the board's policy, and I'm asking for it to be reapproved because this way we have, you know, for clarity, for for clarity purposes, and um, that the board does not investigate complaints where the dental treatment in question was rendered five years ago or longer from the date of the complaint due to the patient record retention statute. So in the past, we have, you know, patient waits seven years, wants to file a complaint. We run into the problem that because a dentist or a healthcare provider isn't required to maintain the record, they can't defend themselves. They can't, they don't have the record anymore, so then it becomes a he said, she said. <coughs> so our policy has been that if the treatment in question is over five years old, then the board would not investigate those complaints because more than likely they would result in not being able to make a determination. And this is what in normal civil litigation in court would be referred to as a statute of limitations. Um, in this case, it's, it's, there's, a, there's a Nevada statute which has a records retention requirement um, after which we can't require the dentist to retain the records. Um, we also get into situations in dentistry where um, what we're looking at as far as an implant or a crown or something like that six or seven years or ten years later is not the way the patient left the office. So it's hard to know, um, you know, if what I'm looking at is because they went and ate rocks or because the dentist did something wrong. Um, so, uh, so it's all tied in. It's, it's not, um, and, and to avoid any inconsistencies or um, and, and for clarity's sake so that everybody is on the same page um, 
we just want to make sure that this is a policy that is approved periodically, just you know, uh, in line with the records retention statute. So I'm asking the board to consider reapproving that policy. So Five moved, the sign. Second, Blasco. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? we we'll move to policy number two. So this is what we uh, touched on a little bit earlier, um, that uh, with the uh, <coughs> increase in litigation and the number of um, people being um, drawn into that litigation. Um, it was decided at the last board member by the board that um, a policy would be appropriate as to the payment of legal fees for individuals who are brought into these uh, lawsuits um, uh, in their capacity as uh, agents or members or staff of the board. Um, I've outlined it here. It's in your. It's in your book. Um, I don't know if you want me to read the whole thing out loud, or if you've all had a chance to read it. If anybody has any questions, um, and it just it, it just lays forth the different scenarios. The first being that the board will defend a staff. Uh, I, I lump them all together. Call them board personnel. Um, uh, either through myself or through the AG's office or through uh, counsel retained by the board. Um, if that is not considered um, sufficient by the individual, they are of course um, uh, entitled to retain their own independent counsel, but as a general policy, the board won't pay for that except in certain circumstances. Um, if there is a circumstance where they're doing it because they want to, uh, or you know, there's not an actual conflict, they can come before the board and make a motion before the board. And in that situation, the um, the hourly rate that we pay to our AG's office would be, uh, if the board approved outside counsel for that individual, it would be at that rate. And then the final circumstance would be is if there is an actual conflict that has been identified, um, then it would be within the board's discretion to either hire independent counsel for that person who is conflicted from having the same counsel as others, um, or to authorize board personnel to retain their own in, uh, independent counsel. And that, it, so, while this lays out a general policy, it also allows for exigent circumstances for someone to come before the board um, in, in, a, in a different in a circumstance that perhaps we haven't not, have not thought of. So, so with that being said, I make a motion to approve the language as um, as Melanie has written it <coughs> on uh, um, board's policy on um, personal counsel. Second, Champagne. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Moving on to the next agenda, General Counsel's report. Okay, so um, the first thing on here um, is, as we've discussed at previous board meetings, uh, Dr. Adrian Ruiz brought a uh, lawsuit in district court. Um, and his lawsuit was, uh, he was petitioning the court to issue a writ of prohibition to prevent the board from uh, an investigation that it was conducting. The court found that he did not meet his burden and denied his petition. Uh, Dr. Ruiz then appealed this denial to uh, the Supreme Court of the State of Nevada. We were referred to, um, to uh, the mandatory settlement conference program. Um, a day or two before that conference was supposed to take place, I was notified by the settlement judge that Dr. Ruiz has uh, agreed to dismiss his appeal. Um, the, and while he has every right to do that, and that would not normally require board approval, the dismissal is conditioned upon each party bearing their own attorney's fees and costs as to the appeal. We have, in the underlying case, received an order from the district court um, approving our request, approving in part, our, our request for um, attorney's fees and his um, his attorney has acknowledged that they did not appeal that ruling 
um, and that uh, she states that that amount will be forwarded to the board, um, she said this month. Um, it's it's approximately $7,500. I don't recall the exact amount, and unfortunately, I, I did not get a chance to look it up. But um, but I've been, you know, this, because we are waiving our ability to seek fees and costs for the appeal, that is something that um, becomes in the realm of a settlement as opposed to just his decision to dismiss, and therefore um, the board would need to approve that before I can um, agree to that. And what is that amount, do you know? You know what, well, it's not very much. I don't know exactly. Um, it, it would just be um, whatever my time was to prepare the this, this settlement brief and um, to, um, you know, I've had a few discussions throughout the settlement process. Um, this was the case that I was handling myself, so we don't have outside council fees on, on this one. Um, it's not that much that's being waived. I don't I don't have an exact figure for you, but it's it's relatively five hundred, five thousand. Somewhere in between there. <laughs> yeah, I I I, I don't that's it. Two uh their fees were seventy five hundred, so it's got Right. Well the the, the, the seventy five hundred was my fees. My fees that and the attorney right. that they are required right. to pay us for the underlying, right. which was much more intensive <coughs> and took much more time than the settlement. So I I would guess off the top of my head, um, yeah, yeah, maybe fifteen hundred, two thousand. So if that Sanders, the motion you're asking for is to approve <coughs> the stipulation for dismissal. Of the appeal. Of, of the, the appeal. appeal, correct. So move, Sandra. Second, the sign. Sorry, just to be clear. Yes. You know that you what, what that it. does is it includes the fact that her fees, whatever it was, fifteen hundred, two thousand. You're you're pretty much just going to write those, write those fees off. Yeah, yes. So yes. just to be clear. Absolutely okay. understand. So, that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but not for the underlying. You're right. not approving a waiver of the underlying fees, no. which were awarded by the district courts. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Okay. Um, now, also under uh, legal action, um, as go ahead. Oh, uh, um, as I think you all received the email, but I have copies for you here um, in our Abby Dental case um, that Abby Dental um, has brought against uh, the board and currently now almost everybody sitting at this table. Um, they, uh, they have moved to uh, amend their complaint. I have copies of that motion and the proposed amended complaint. If anybody would like a copy, I do believe you all received it in your emails. Um, uh, this is something, I they filed this at 11.30 last night um, and circulated it this morning. So I'll be honest with you, I haven't had a chance to read through the 50 pages yet, um, but uh, if anybody has any questions after that, I did want to let you know that this has occurred um, and that uh, it has been referred to our outside counsel who is handling this case for us. Um, the other thing that has gone on in this case is there was, uh, there have been two rulings in this case, neither of which has been reduced to an actual order yet. Um, the first is that Abby Dental's petition for writ was denied. And again, like Dr. Ruiz, they moved to the court to attempt to uh, have the court enjoin the board from continuing an investigation. Um, the court denied that and specifically stated that <coughs> the board does have the authority to do the investigation that they're doing. Um, there are competing orders that are in front of the judge. I don't know why the judge has not issued a specific order at this time, but the final order with the findings of fact and conclusions of law has not been, um, has not been done by the judge yet, has not um, been filed yet. Um, the second issue was a um, was a, an adjacent issue uh, where there was a motion to enforce some subpoenas that were um, that were issued uh, in in that investigation. Um, the judge found that the um, the statute allowing the subpoenas states that the uh, the board should 
enact regulations if they want their executive director to be able to issue the subpoenas in investigations. We don't have that particular regulation. He did not find that the subpoena itself was the, the content. He made no findings on the content of the subpoena, only who issued it. Um, and so this is something that the board will need to address at another time um, as to how or if subpoenas will be issued during um, during uh, investigations. This is one judge's opinion. This is not a Supreme Court opinion. Another judge could hear this same issue and come up with a different opinion. Um, it, so that that is an order that is also pending. Um, counsel for Abby Dental was instructed by the judge to prepare a proposed order and circulate it to our <coughs> outside counsel um, for approval. To my knowledge, that hasn't been done yet. So I know that you've all received in your emails a minute order as to that. Um, for whatever reason, you did not receive the minute order denying the petition for writ, um, and you didn't receive an actual order because one has not been issued <coughs> yet. So, um, so that is the status of those two cases. Since our last meeting, there was a third lawsuit that was filed. It came and went very quickly. Um, it was uh, another, uh, another one of our uh, licensees who had been under investigation, um, who uh, through his counsel asked me for a proposed stipulation because he wanted to see if he could um, uh, settle the matter. I provided a proposed stipulation and they promptly sued myself and um, and Sophia um, the in order uh, stating that uh, they were looking for a, a temporary restraining order to prevent us from going forward with an informal hearing uh, the judge denied that as well they asked for uh, a preliminary injunction and uh, we did all of the brief or our outside counsel did the briefing on the preliminary injunction um, and two days before that was supposed to go to hearing, they dismissed that case. Um, they have... Who dismissed it? The plaintiff. Decided not to go forward with the motion that he had requested. Um, and we did move for our attorney's fees in that case as well. Those were denied in that case because, um, because they dismissed it. The judge found that there had not been any findings as to who prevailed. I don't personally agree because the temporary restraining order was denied, but um, but that was the judge's ruling, and you know it was a very quick, open and shut matter that um, that you know at this point, uh, unless you feel differently, <laughs> uh, we, we have not appealed. Um, again, uh, with that, I don't think that that's been reduced to an order yet either, um, but I'll have to check on that. Um, those are the pending cases um, uh, with the lawsuits in district court and uh, the appellate court. So um, I have a question. Yes. When the attorney general's office gets sued, who represents them? Um, you know, it depends right now because we have a change in administration, so I think we have a change in policy. <coughs> so at this point, I'm not sure. However, with this case... That was the old administration. Well, yeah. with this case, um, it was... Lee Drizzen, right? Lee Drizzen. Yeah. yeah. You since have he to was do outside counsel. Right. Well, yeah. he he was, yeah. he was the well. He since since it was since he the issues the as issue, to yeah. the two of us he were just, completely aligned. Mm -hmm. Right. So in defending me, he was defend, right. defending yeah. defending the AG's office. Um, okay. Yeah. I just I, I mean the, the, this this lawsuit and the board. Stuff gets, yeah. And gets to be clear, just just as for example, I know since I work at the Attorney General's office, and it should be for Melanie as well, <coughs> if they want to see her, they do have to attach my office to it too, which okay. they did not. But okay. it went, as Melanie said, it came and went so quick. Because it's a state board. Right. right. Well, yeah. because yeah. I work for the AG's office too, so they have yes. to attach my office to it too. Okay. Not just me mm. as a deputy, but They're my entire office. office. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They filed it. Over that last one of you, that one came quick and it went. So um, <coughs> the, the doctor asked. Uh, for stipulation, I had noticed the informal hearing uh, the night before the informal hearing. Um, he filed a lawsuit seeking to restrain me from going forward with the informal hearing. Um, he filed that at something like 6 or 6.30 in the evening, and we were called to the court for an emergency motion at 10 or 11 the next morning. Um, we went in. The judge did not find merit to his request for a temporary restraining order. Um, and. Instead, and gave the uh, gave 
his attorney the option to dismiss the case right there or to put uh, the motion for preliminary injunction on calendar. She asked that it be put on calendar. Um, in deference to that, the informal hearing had not was not rescheduled. Um, we we had um, we had our attorney file the opposition and and make you know respond. Um, and uh, when, when you say we had our attorney, had Mr. Our Dreisen, <coughs> he um, and his office they they filed a response. Um, and it was either the day before or the two days before that was supposed to be on hearing. They dismissed that case. So that's so that came and went within a few weeks in between our last meetings and now. Um, so, um, but I did want to let you know that it had occurred. Um, I think that's all for lawsuit updates. Unless there's any questions. So is. Mr. Dries, when we approved that money for last time, and he took on this case? When you approved Mr. Dreisen, you uh, approved him as outside counsel for any litigation matters that it's, you just know, in general, just in general, way. yes. So. I, had, I had a question about the liability insurance like the board has. So I can discuss that with you afterward. Okay. All right, so moving forward. We're going to. Did we approve this? The settlement? The, I think we did. Yes, yeah, yes, we did. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to move on to item B consideration of stipulation agreement. Um, okay, so Dr. Dill, um, I wish she would have stuck around, but um, my uh, information is that she has withdrawn her settlement agreement. Um, she does not want the board to vote on it. Um, so we will take that off calendar unless anybody has any objection. I'm mean, not off the agenda unless anybody has any objection. Uh, point of information: Where does that go? It moves forward point. to a hearing. We'll, we'll do it all. Notice an informal okay. hearing. Mm -hmm. Right. And that document's confidential. Right. And I and I will note that. Um, well, no, never mind. Um, yeah, it, it is a confidential document. Um, she had asked that it be put on, and has now asked that it be taken off. So. So she doesn't want a stipulation agreement. The stipulation she wants agreement. to move forward. She wants to move forward with her informal hearing. Oh, so that's okay. Mm -hmm. Because it hasn't been approved by the board at her request. Okay. She was the first one that stood up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So moving okay. forward. Moving on. Um, the next stipulation agreement is um, with Dr. Mignon Pack, and his attorney is here with us today. Um, and um, basically, this. Uh, Dr. Pack received uh, two patient complaints. They proceeded through our initial investigation as well as um, our review panel. Dr. Pack was given uh, the review panel recommendations and, um, and requested that his attorney review them. Uh, we had discussions regarding the uh, stipulation um, and he um, agreed to the corrective action plan that you see before you. Um, yes. Oh yes, if you'd like to make your appearance for the record, I apologize. Good morning, James Quad on behalf of Dr. Pack. And this is a non-disciplinary uh, stipulation agreement. He has agreed to um, some continuing education, um, some monitoring as to the issues that were um, in the in the two complaints, um, it's stated uh, what the agreed upon findings are, um, and these are findings that <coughs> Dr. Pack has agreed to. Um, and on behalf of Dr. Pack, um, I'm requesting that the board um, approve this stipulation. So moved. Second. Second, Pisani. Discussion. Um, I just have a question. Uh, Mr. Kwan, do you represent this doctor throughout the entire proceedings? No, I did not. Um, I was retained at the tail end of the proceedings back, I believe, in, um, it was in October of last year. Okay. And, but uh, uh, on the date specified on this stipulation, um, was, 
Were you representing him at that time? I, I, I was. Thank so you. he was represented by counsel to execute this stipulation. That's correct. Thank you very much. Um, and I will note that um, Dr. Pack was very cooperative um, and um, he requested that I present a proposed stipulation to him at the time that I did that. I did suggest to him that he have independent counsel review that, and I believe that that's when um, Mr. Pond came on. Um, so. We'll just go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Any further discussion? We have a motion on the second. Yeah. Yeah. So all, all in, all in all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So we're going to move on to item C, <coughs> contracts, old business. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, <coughs> we on November the 29th at the board meeting. <coughs> So, Melanie, we're on item C, the contract. Um, oh, for Eisenberg. So this was um, on last time. Um, to be frank, I don't know that we will ever need Mr. Eisenberg. Um, but if we do need him, it may be something that we need rather quickly. And therefore, um, I, after la the last meeting's discussion, it was tabled. Um, I did not receive any further questions um, regarding the need for the appellate counsel. Um, but to reiterate, um, in these lawsuits, uh, well, the Abbey Dental lawsuit specifically, um, a, an appellate attorney has made an appearance. Um, appellate law is a specialized area of law. Um, and uh, it is suggested that um, if this goes to an appeal on any of these issues, that um, that the board also have an appellate case. <coughs> it may or may not ever go there. Um, I, I don't know what's going to happen. As I said earlier, um, the orders have not been uh, entered at this time. Um, and I, and I, until they are, we won't know if it's going to be appealed or not. Um, and, but in the meantime, it would be appropriate because because any of these contracts need to be approved by the Board of Examiners, um, and sometimes that might take a month or two or three to even get on their agenda, um, it would be nice to have it in place should we need it. Um, if we don't need it, the Board doesn't spend a penny. Um, if we need it, it's in place. A point of information, Sanders, this is not applying a retainer to his employment. This is only on the as needed basis. So Correct. We're not paying him an ongoing retainer to be there for us. In order for the board to pay um, any contract <coughs> over, what is it, $1,999 or yeah, something <coughs> like that? Yeah. Um, anything over $2,000. Contract. Um, even though it's the board's money and <laughs> it's the, we still by statute and, and, and um, we need approval to make those payments from the Board of Examiners. And that's all we're, we're doing, is we're seeking that approval from the Board of Examiners should we need to make those payments. Um, I don't know that we'll ever need it, but I don't know that we won't. Sanders and moves to approve the uh, contract as presented. Second. I have a question. You know, back to my uh, earlier about the, uh, the liability insurance. You know, the going through like the insurance policy to handle the costs. Well, I don't know if you particularly have liability insurance. You can ask the executive director. But regarding lawsuits, as far as the board itself, it's um, represented by the state AG's office. So you do have, I mean, we do take care of litigation for you. Um, however, as Dr. Pisani asked earlier about who would do that, would we? When you get sued. Right, yeah. So when we get sued, I know our office takes care of it. So. Um, for this again, as Melanie said, it's a it's a specialized area of law. I have a full plate, <laughs> so I don't know. For example, if you wanted to tender it to our office again, where no, it would go? I mean, do we have a library insurance? Or a library There's such a thing. We have a general liability policy that we pay into, but um, it doesn't cover 
It doesn't know, cover like lawsuits. At HOAs, you know, have, have some kind of like liability where, where board members would be uh, covered. It, HOAs run on their own charters. Yeah, we run pursuant to statute right. and, and that's laws and regulations. That's why yeah, that's so why we have the reserves. Right. Is so that there is money put away should you know the board find themselves in a position of you know of, mm -hmm. of a lawsuit or litigation. Uh, the other issue is that while we have under our statute we have the option of referring it to the AG's office, but the board also has the option of hiring their own counsel <coughs> not required to use the AG's office. Well, I, mean, I, um, said, I was just so, curious if yeah. we had a liability insurance, like we have like malpractice insurance, that we have like some kind of. No, I don't think we do. Okay. Not that I'm aware of. Any yes, questions? Mm -hmm. And two questions, just so I understand. And, and when you say you have a full plate, we, we pay for your services as well. There's an hourly. So right. if you're busy and the work has to be done, it's then just going to be paid elsewhere. If you are. So when you say I have a full plate. Right. Well, uh, all I'm saying is I have a full plate. So for example, if you don't approve the contract, it could go to someone else in our office. It could not. Oh, no, I don't. There's right. a fee. There's a, there's right. a money. Someone's being involved. paid. Right. 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 Yeah, that's that's correct. And right. then the only other was just a clarification mm -hmm. on the contract itself. On um, so the payment for services is at the rate of three hundred dollars per hour, mm -hmm. and then uh, section six talks about consideration for specific documents. That's at a different rate. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Page two of nine. Consideration. Um, I think this is an Number six, I Yeah, number six. They have associates, they have paralegals, they have different. So I think that teams. that 300, I, and uh, my math is not, I'm not so sharp in math, but I think that that's, um, for his associates. Uh, it's a, it's a, an average uh, between his, his time, his associate's time and his paralegal time. I think it's an average, um, at the three hundred dollars an hour, so if he's putting in the work, it's going to be a little bit more. If his associate's putting in the work, it's going to be a little bit less. Um, so I think that that's where that three hundred comes from, um, so that we have a. An, an, uh, so in that case, we're not going to be charged for it. Where there's that three hundred dollars an hour, there's not going to be that separate billing for this specific amount of work for, for paralegals or whatever, because then that's additional to three. Oh, million. no, 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 it's not right. an addition. It's right. okay. We will be so charged. Yeah. We'll get Correct. We'll okay. get a billing statement okay. if he And it'll it, indicate who did say what. Who okay. did what, what, how rate. long it took them, what rate they're being paid okay. at, right. and yes, no, it's not It's not this plus okay. this. So Absolutely. that's why yes. on, then on item six that there is actually spelled out for because Correct. they may actually be doing those documents, and then that would be Correct. 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 Just Thank you. <coughs> we have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. Yeah, we have a motion and a second. All right, so all in favor say, oh, any questions? Mm -hmm. With no second. Oh, sorry, we, we need, need a, a second. second. Oh, we need a second. Mm -hmm. I thought someone did. I thought we, I thought we did, because they Oh, I got interrupted. Pisani second. <laughs> 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 all right. So, all in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed? All right. Let's move on to item D. Request, request to consider the stipulation agreement entered into the board on January the 19th, 2018, fulfilled complete due to order issued by United States District Court. And Dr. Leslie. Cotler. I think his attorney is up in Reno, right okay. okay, and his attorney is in Reno. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I agree on behalf of Cotler. Hi, and Dr. Cotler is here with us today as well. Um, Dr. Cotler entered into uh, a stipulation agreement uh, to coincide with um, his probation through the state. Uh, as part of that stipulation agreement, it was uh, it's, it was stated that uh, should his probation uh, be suspended prior to the anticipated end of the probationary period, that he could petition the board to deem his board stipulation completed as well. And that is um, what he has done and why he is here today. This is Blasco, moved to approve the request for um, 
uh, suspension of, of uh, the current um, supervision Second. monitoring. Second, Pisani. Any discussion? Do you have Miss anything that you'd like to add, for, uh, Mr. Gates? Uh, Emma, I think some are right. We had a, a year or a uh Oh, you're, you're breaking up. Um, it's a transmission. Want to try again? Well, we have blinking light here, so I'll adjust. What's the We're going to have to try some assist. Okay. It's going to pass. We're going to get some tinfoil. We need some more out of Fill in the blank. The blinking light. <laughs> It's that magnetic personality that's messing with the... <laughs> it's heard for me. that to say. Is that you? I don't know. You sound like Charlie Brown's teacher. <laughs> if, we, if we have an issue with, with Mr. Gates, if we're Dr. Dr. Kotler, yes. if you'd like to say anything, that's fine. But we have a motion in a second. Yeah. Do you have anything to say? No, I mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give me another chance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Okay. Now, he'll get back to us. Okay. okay. <laughs> Dr. Cotler, it's been approved. So I will be sending you something to show and reflect that the stipulation is complete. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to go to discuss Ray's like, forget it, I'm not talking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so mad. Yeah, he's, he's done. If you wanted to talk to us, you could phone Yeah. <laughs> like you guys do. <laughs> so we're going to move forward to discuss the policy to use to use an um, affidavit verse, versus court reporter transcription upon the ex ex execution. execution of a stipulation agreement in certain circumstances. Okay, let me read that again. Okay. <laughs> Discuss policies to use an affidavit versus court reporter transcription upon the execution a stipulation agreement in certain circumstances. Okay. Okay, so um, um, this is the subject of Miss Tina Sue's um, earlier um, public comment. I, I wish she would have stayed because um, there's a clear misunderstanding of what this policy is based upon that public Just comment. Just for the record, she uh, never does. She never, she never stays? Yeah. No. Okay. Um, but, you know, they, they are making these allegations and these accusations without having an understanding of what the purpose of this policy is. Um, to answer the question, why is it on the agenda? It is on the agenda because I requested that it be put on the agenda as something that um, for the board to consider. My reasoning behind this is this has absolutely nothing to do with informal hearings. Since the implementation of the review panel, um, our licensees are given um, uh, they're given notice of what the review panel findings and recommendations are. They are also told that if they would like that a settlement can be discussed. They're not required to discuss that settlement. They're not required to enter into a settlement. The, the other option, if the review panel believes that additional investigation um, is, is warranted, is to go forward with an informal hearing. We have been receiving a lot of requests to have these matters settled prior to an informal hearing. This is a request by the licensee. It is not a mandate by me. It is not a mandate by any staff member. It's a request by the licensee that says, I see where the review panel is coming from. I understand their findings. I want to get this over with, and I want to uh, negotiate to settle this matter with the board. At that point, um, and hopefully they have an attorney, um, not some of them choose not to. Um, in every, any case that they choose not to, I absolutely uh, advise them to retain independent counsel, but it is their choice. They're entitled to it, but they're not required to have anyone. Um, in those <coughs> cases where either the licensee and or his or her attorney 
uh, request a stipulation and they received the proposed stipulation and they agreed to the terms of the stipulation. Um, it has been the policy in the past that we put that stipulation on the record, meaning that we bring the licensee in and I sit and I examine him or her to make sure that he or she understands the stipulation, um, is entering into the stipulation without any coercion or duress, um, that type of, of information. To be frank, in the, uh, in the case where someone does not have um, an attorney, I would probably continue to do that. However, um, the licensee is, is oh, they're having difficulty here, I guess. Okay. There. So they need to reboot their system, okay. so they're asking for a five minute reset. Okay, we'll take a five minute reset. Oh, oh wait, is it, do we have a, <laughs> no. yes, we have a motion to. No, 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 just oh. take a five minute reset. Okay. Yep. We're gonna take a five minute recess, guys. Okay. <laughs> 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 <laughs>